Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be creating this terminal style landing page. And obviously you can you know, switch this up with your own name and your own links. And we're gonna create this from scratch with HTML, CSS. And then we're gonna use a library called winbox.js for these links here. You'll see if I click on the about link, it opens up this cool little window that I can you know, drag around. We can minimize, maximize, we can even drag and resize it. If I click contact, that'll open up a second window and you'll see the background and foreground will have different color headings or headers here, um, which I think this is pretty cool. So I wanted to use this library and implement it in some way that was pretty easy. Um, so I thought this was a good idea. It gives it like an operating system type feel. Now the design for this, for this landing page, I actually got from a blog from a developer named Tiffany White. I didn't use any of the code in this blog post. I just asked her if I could use the, uh, the design. So I just basically replicated it and I'll put a link to her blog in the description. And then this is the winbox.js website where you can see a whole bunch of different examples and see how to implement it. Basically we just create a new instance and then we can create a bunch of different properties like title, background, uh, the positioning of it, and so on. And I mean, you can really customize it. We're gonna be using some of these events like on focus and on blur so that we can change the background and foreground colors. All right, and then this is the GitHub uh, repository if you wanna check that out. And this is where we're gonna download the bundle. So as far as my setup, I just have VS Code open and I have uh, an index HTML in the root. A JS folder with a main.js file and then a CSS folder with a style CSS. So you just want to create this if you're following along. All right. And then as far as the library goes, we're going to grab it from here. Now you can you can get the CSS and the JavaScript separately or you can just get it all in this bundle, which I'm going to go ahead and download. And I'm just going to grab all of this. This is the entire bundle here. So we'll just copy that and then let's go back into VS Code and in the JavaScript folder, I'm gonna create a winbox.bundle.js and just paste that in and save. Okay, so then we can just include that into our HTML and we'll be able to use winbox. Now I'm just gonna close up the sidebar here and let's create our HTML. We use Emmet to create a boilerplate and I'm just gonna say welcome for the title. And then let's link in our style sheet, which is in CSS slash style CSS. And down at the bottom here, above the ending body tag, we'll add our script. Let's add our winbox, so JS slash winbox bundle. And then let's also add our custom main.js. And then in the body here, we're gonna have a container. The HTML is actually pretty simple. So in the container, we'll have our nav with a UL. And then let's do an LI with the ID of about, and then just put slash about for the text. And then we'll do the same for contact. And of course you can add other links if you want. We're not using uh, a tags here because these list items are just gonna have event listeners on them. So let's just save that. And I'm gonna go just open this up with uh, live server. So it's gonna look like this for now. And the next thing we wanna add is just the, the main content. So under nav, I'm gonna put a main tag. And then in the H1 here, you can put your own name. I'm just going to put B Traversy and then colon money sign just to kind of make it look like a terminal. And then for uh, for the cursor, we're going to have a span with the class of cursor with a pipe character in there. And we're going to make that blink using CSS. And I'm just going to get rid of the space right here as well. OK, so under the H1, we'll have an H3 and we're just going to say find me online and then a UL with a bunch of list items with links. Now I'm just gonna grab all of my links and paste them in. So you can see I have like my YouTube channel, my Udemy page, all my social media, um, GitHub code pen. So you can put whatever you'd like in here. We'll save that and it's gonna just look like this for now. All right, so, and I have everything set to target blank so that it opens in a new tab. Now, as far as the box content, like the about and the contact, we're gonna put that right in here and it's gonna display down here at first, but we're gonna hide it from the, the regular web page and then insert it into the boxes when we get to that. So let's go under the div here. I'm gonna have a class of hidden. And in here we'll have an ID of, let's say about dash content. And in here I'm gonna have an H2 
we'll say about dash me, and we're gonna it's gonna have the same format as our H1, just the colon money sign, and then we'll have our cursor, and just get rid of that space. And then under that, I'm just gonna have a couple paragraphs. Uh, obviously, you can put whatever you'd like in here. I just have some paragraphs with a little bit about myself. And then for the contact content, it's basically the same type of thing here. So I'm gonna just grab this about content div and paste that in here and change this to contact. And this will say contact me. And then let me see, I'm just gonna grab, place these two paragraphs with a paragraph and then just, you know, fake phone number and email. And like I said, that's gonna show over here for now, but we're gonna fix that in a minute. So that should be all of the HTML that we need so we can move on to the style sheet now. And the font that I'm gonna be using is Roboto Mono. So if I go to, let's go to Google Fonts. And if you just search for Roboto, you should see this right here. And if you wanna use a different font, that's fine. I'm gonna select the 300, so the light 300 the regular 400 and the bold 700. So we're gonna select those. I'm gonna click over here on import and just grab this in between the style tags, copy that, and then paste that in my style sheet. Okay, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and just add our universal selector, set our box sizing to border box, and I'm gonna add a reset on the, the margin and padding. So we're gonna set that to zero. And then for the, let's say, body, uh, let's add our font family. And that's gonna be set to Roboto Mono. Okay, and as far as the, the text color, I'm actually gonna add a custom property or a variable for that. So we're gonna say on the root scope, let's do dash dash text dash color. This is the format of a, a CSS custom property. And I'm gonna set that to hexadecimal 00AA00, which is like that terminal style green. Okay, and then in the body, let's continue on here and let's add a background color. And I'm gonna make that 333, so not quite black. If you wanna make it darker or lighter, you can do that. Um, the color of the text by default, I'm gonna to set to a light gray. And I'm gonna up the font size a little just because it's such a small layout, there's not much text. So we'll set that to 18 pixels. And then let's set the line height. So the default line height on the body will do 1.6. Okay, now let's style some of the root elements like the H1. So H1 is gonna have that text color. So I'm gonna use the variable here. So this is how we can use a custom property. You can see that changes to green. Let's, uh, let's make the font size a little bigger as well. I'm gonna do 50 pixels on the H1 and uh, not color, what do we want next? Let's do letter spacing. Just to give it more of a terminal feel, I'm gonna do negative five pixels, squish it a little bit, and then let's set a margin bottom just to push the rest of the stuff down. We'll do 20 pixels. All right, so that's our H1. Our H2, which we can't see yet, that's, that's well, actually, we can see it, it's right here. We're gonna hide this in a minute. But um, let's set that color to that text color as well on the H2. And I'm just gonna add the class of hidden. Remember, that's wrapped around the about and the contact content. So I'm gonna set that to display none because I don't wanna see that in the page. All right, so H2, and then we have our H3, which is the find me online. I'm just gonna add a margin bottom say margin bottom, set that to, let's do 10 pixels. Okay, and then we have our links. Obviously that's, you know, our links are the wrong color. So we're gonna set that color to our text color. And let's see, what else do we wanna do here? I don't want these underlines, so we'll set the text decoration to none. All right, and then let's see, for the nav, let's do, actually let's do the container to just kind of push everything to the middle. So we have a class of container wrapped around everything. I'm gonna set the max width of that to 600 pixels. And then I'm gonna set margin to auto 
to kind of push that to the middle. So if this were bigger, you'll see it ends right there. Um, I'm also going to use Flexbox here to align everything. I can make this a little smaller. All right, so for the container, let's go ahead and display as flex, which automatically will put the two elements, which are the nav and the main, the two children elements of the container. We'll put them into a, a horizontal row, which I don't want. So I'm going to set the flex direction to column to put that back in a vertical orientation. And then let's set a height on this as well so that we can uh, so that we can center it vertically. So I'm going to I'm going to use 70 VH, 70 viewport heights. So it's not going to take up the whole height just to like, I don't know, about here and then we'll center it to that. So justify content, set that to center. That's going to move it to the middle of the 70 viewport heights. And then we want obviously we want to align it, uh, you know, horizontal. So align items. We're going to set that to center. So that'll put everything in the middle. Now, let's see, let's do the nav. Actually, let's get rid of those bullet points. So UL, we want to set list style type to none. And then for the nav, let's put that right here. The nav, I'm going to set a width to 30%. You can mess with this if you if you're going to have more links, um, but that's going to be 30%. And then for the nav UL, I want these to be horizontal, so I'm going to display. Let's do display flex, which will put them into a column. I'm sorry, a row, not a column. And let's justify content and put the, the remaining space around. And what that does is it, it puts the space on the sides and in the middle of the flex items. And then we'll also just align items center. And then for the list items, so nav UL LI. I'm going to use the green color here. So let's say var dash dash text color. And also I want it to be a pointer when I hover over them. So I'm going to add cursor pointer because we want to click these and have, um, you know, have the boxes open. So I think that's it uh, for now, except for the, the cursor. I want this cursor to blink so we can do this with a uh, keyframe with an animation. So let's take our cursor class and I'm just going to set the font weight to 700 and let's set the animation. So the animation, I'm going to have a keyframe called blink and we're going to actually want to put the time in here, which will be one second. So every one second we want that to be called. We're going to use step end and then infinite because we want it to keep blinking, not just once. And then let's create our keyframes. So keyframes, we call it blink. And we're going to use from and to here and set the color to transparent. And then at 50%, so basically halfway through the animation, we want to set the color to the text color, which is our green. So if I save that, you'll see now it'll blink. OK, because it's going from transparent back to green and then back to transparent. It's going to constantly do that, which gives it that that blinking cursor effect. OK, so now that we have that done, let's um, let's start on our JavaScript. So remember, we have the at these allies with the ID of about and contact. We also have the content down here. So we want to bring those four things into our JavaScript. So let's open this up and let's bring in, let's say about and we'll use document dot query selector and we want to select the ID of about. I'm going to copy this down. So we have four. The second one will be contact. So those are the two list items. Then we want the content. So about content will be about dash content. Also contact content will be contact dash content. All right, so we'll bring that stuff in. Let's just make this a little wider. All right, now as far as um, 
the event listeners go, let's take the about, which is the list item, or the link, whatever you want to call it, and let's add an event listener and listen for a click. And when it clicks, we're going to call a function. And then this is where we want to create our win box. And we do that simply by initializing new win box. And just by doing that, I think it will. Yeah, so it does show the box. It doesn't have a title or anything. Um, and it's just positioned in the top left. So we can just add some custom properties to it. You can also put, put this in a variable. So I'm going to put this in, let's say, about box. And then inside here, it takes in an object with some options. So we want a title for the title, let's say about me. So now if we click that, we should see the title up here. And let's set the background. So this is the background of the, the, the header. And I want that to be the same green that we have here. So I'm just going to grab that. Okay, so now that's green. As far as I know, there's no property to change this color. We have to use CSS for that. Um, so we, we could actually add that now. And I'll just show you if we open up the dev tools and we go to our elements, you'll see that this has a class of WB title. That's the header, which you know we can change the color in the JavaScript. But for the body, we're going to use this WB body class. So let's go to our style sheet real quick and just add down here. I'll go right here and let's say WB dash body. And we're going to set the background. I want it to be a little darker than the web page. So let's do one, one, one. And I'm also going to do padding 20 so that everything isn't stuck to the edge. So now it's dark and there's no content in here yet. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But we have the, we have the title, the background. Let's uh, let's position it. Actually, we'll add the, the dimensions first. So you can set out a width. I'm going to do 400 pixels and a height of 400 pixels. And then for the positioning, we're just going to say top. We'll do 50. Yeah, I'll do top 50. Right. Bottom. And left. So all of those are going to be 50. So now if I click this, it's going to be 50 over 50 down and I can't go past that. I can't go to the edge of the page. All right. Now let's see for for the content, you can actually add an HTML. I believe you can do this. You can add H HTML and then I just want to see if I can do this. I think you can just add it right in like that. Yeah, you can do that if you want, but we don't want to do that. We want to take it from the DOM. So instead of HTML, we're going to use mount and then we're just going to add our about con uh, content, which we brought in. So now if I go and I click it, that about content is going to be put right in there. Uh, one more thing I want to do in the style sheet is just add some margin on the pa uh, paragraph. So paragraph, let's do margin. 20 pixels on the top and bottom. All right, cool. So we mounted our content um, for the contact. It's going to be pretty much the same thing. So I'm just going to grab this. And, and obviously you could create like an abstract function to to create new boxes. But since we only have two, I'm just going to do it the easy way. So we're going to change that to contact and we'll change the variable name to contact box. Let's change the title to contact me. The background, I'm going to change that. We actually don't need the background color because we are going to we're going to have an on focus and that's going to set the background there. So we actually don't need. Well, I guess I'll just keep it for now, but we'll get rid of that in a second. The positioning, I'm going to move it down a little. So we'll do 150 and then over 250 from the left. And then the content, obviously, we want to use the contact content. So that's the about that's the contact. Now for the colors, because remember, we want the, the foreground to be green, the background one to be gray. So the way we can do that is by using the on focus event. I think it's yeah, it's all lowercase and then add a function. 
we can use the this keyword and then there's different methods we can use like set background and for that we're going to set the background to this green color so that's if it's in focus and then we can actually get rid of that background so that's on focus and then let's do uh, we could just copy this down and then let's do an on blur so that's when we click out of it or onto another window then we're going to set the background to 777 and I want this to be to happen on both of these so we'll go ahead and put that in so if we go to about it's green click on contact the about turns to gray if I click back on about this one turns to gray and this turns to green and of course I can move these around you also have a modal option so on about just to show you real quick if you want to just use this as a modal you can set modal to true and it'll automatically give you the overlay and there's no you know I can't move this around or resize it or anything like that so you always have the option to just use modal in fact I'll just comment that out so you have it there um, one other thing I wanted to do is have the blinking cursor here as well in the in the box so let's just grab Oh, I do have it there I just didn't put the pipe character in so just make sure you add that and then you should have the blinking cursor here as well all right so that should do it if you guys have any other ideas and you know you add to this then feel free to tag me on Twitter I love seeing when people take projects and, and put their own twist on it but that's it hopefully you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video